that are affiliated like, like the Pentecostal organization or, or the Baptist Association, whichever of those, when they bring a pastor in, you realize that pastor gets paid. That pastor receives a, a, a monthly salary. And believe you me, when you're making, especially even in this area, when they're making upwards of fifty to $60,000 to, to preach, no. it makes me wonder how many of them, if they wasn't getting a dollar, besides a little love offering every month, Right. How many of them truly stand behind that pulpit and preach? Would the word of God mean that much more to you, or would it mean even less to you? Amen. Would you be more eager? You know what? I mean? That's exactly right, Miss Violet. It becomes a job. We should look at it as a job. We should never look at preaching as a job. Right. We should look at it as a precious gift that God's given us the ability to do to reach the lost, to see lives changed. You can't put a monetary dollar figure on that. Right. There's not a soul that can be saved. You can say that person's worth ten dollars. This no here's worth thirty. Right. I mean, really, Beth preached on, preached on this morning. Talk about the price. Jesus was thirty pieces of silver. Amen. Ooh. Think about that. Thirty pieces of silver. What value do we really put on it? That's right. In God's eyes, it's priceless. We are priceless. Because guess what? He paid that price. Amen. He paid a price that not one of us had the ability to do. Yep. We don't have it in us to do it. Right. And that's the problem with the church now is that it's gotten away from that type of teaching. And just like you said, Miss Violet, they take it as a job. Take away that money. Take away the financial support. And you'll find out real fast who the real deal is. If, if the money that's coming into the church never sees your bank account, but that money is being told by the board, how many people need help this month? Yep. How many people can we go out here and help? We've heard of so-and-so needed the, the, the elders down here at this, this facility in this neighborhood. We know it's a cold winter. We know it's going to be rough on their finances. Let's go down here and bless them and pay their water, to pay their electric bill. Let's go down here to this family that just lost everything in a house fire. What have we got? You know what? We've got it to give. God's blessed us. Let's go bless them with the, with, uh, some, with the things that they need to survive on. Amen. When that pastor has to answer for those type of things, you'll find out real quick what they're made of. If they really are men and women of God. Amen. You'll find out real quick if it's just a job. Or if it's truly their calling. Amen. Deep down in their hearts. I think that's what separates people. Do you do it for the financial gain? Do you do it to get recognized? Or do you truthfully do it because you truly love the Lord? Amen. And you want to reach the lost. Your desire is to be humble. So just as, just as Peter wrote, to humble ourselves. Right. <clears throat> Because when we get to that point of humbling ourselves, saying, not my needs, but the needs of the others. When it becomes not my will, Lord, but yours. That brought up a great thing. I don't know I want to steal her, steal a message that she's got planned. But she's right there. Three dangerous prayers in the Bible. Three dangerous prayers. And those three dangerous prayers are the ones that we pray ourselves at times. We pray for God. What'd you say, honey? Send me. To send me. <laughs> use me. To use me. I know that one. I wrote down. Use me and show me. Because if you don't want God to show you, don't ask. That's right. Amen. If you don't want God to truly send you, don't ask. That's right. If you don't want God to truly use you, don't ask. Right. Because the moment you ask, yeah. God expects you to do it. Right. Amen. He doesn't want half-hearted Christians. You can speak all manner you want to, but the moment you utter those type of prayers, God means business. He's not in this business to say, okay, I'll let that slide. What did Paul write to Timothy? True speakers. Right. They don't want no part of it. Amen. It's easier to say, now nah, I was I was it was just in the moment, Lord. 
I heard everybody else talking, and I, I knew I had to sound good. But when you truly have a heart for God, sometimes He may put you in those places. Who was it? Uh, Isaiah heard from the Lord, Here I am. Send me. Yep. When we become that bold, and we truly love the Lord to say, Send me. Trust me, he'll do it. Yeah. But those other three prayers go along with it. And when you start asking him, he'll do it. But that's where I believe a lot of people miss the mark. And that's why I say it. too many people, too many churches are losing sight of that. Amen. It's all about numbers. It's about the more people you have in, the more money should be in the, in the offering plate. What good is having $10,000 in a bank account if you don't help one person? What good is having a hundred thousand dollars if you're not reaching the lost and, and seeing people's lives change? That money means nothing. You may get paid fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year, or be like these televangelists make millions of dollars. I've seen where, and, and this and this is a fact. I've heard of one major, I ain't gonna mention his name, say that these churches pay him thousands of dollars. And he travels all over the place. They pay him thousands of dollars to come and preach. And I'm thinking, they pay you to speak the word? You have to have somebody give you money to speak the word? What if God sent you to a place like Ethiopia? What if he sent you somewhere in a third world country to preach to the lost? And all you have is the clothes on your back. Would you serve God then? Would you still be out here professing his love? There's a lot of people, a lot of missionaries out there that, that die. That die in the field for the love of Christ. Because they take what they, they, take what they have serious. Right. And until the church wakes up, until the church gets to the point of calling out these ministers that speak lies and deceit. We're not going to see it happen. But we've got to do it. We've got to clean house. We've got to get to the point when we start seeing stuff like that, call them out. We can't let this stuff go on. That's like, you know, Brother Took saying there about the money. <laughs> it's one thing over it's, it's 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 more than money. It's power. Yeah. They love having that power. But I just want to add a quick thing here. Over in still in the same second Timothy chapter two, verse fifteen. It says, Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun of profane and vain babblings, for they all increase unto more ungodliness. Amen. Oh, if you look over in verse 23, it says, But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strife. If you look down below where Dr. Chuck was reading, 12 and 13 it says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But if you look at verse 13, which is what we've been talking about. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Yeah. So it's going to get worse. Yeah. But it's going to take the true child, the true children of God, to stand up Amen. and proclaim this word. We're going to be hated. We're going to be despised. We're going to have rocks thrown at us. <laughs> but we got to hang in there. we got to stay strong. Amen. Because... He'll make a way. He'll make a way for us to get it through. To go to get through. He'll make a way for us. Because there's going to come a time when we're going to struggle. Yeah. There's going to come a time because you stand up on this word and you profess Jesus to be the only way. The only way to get to heaven. By the blood. Yeah. The only way. You're going to get persecuted. Yep. You're going to be despised. You're going to be hated. That's when we need to be strong.
strong and he's going to stand Amen. upon his promises. Right. Yes, they will answer. They will answer. 